In this video, we're going to take a look at what the limit of a function means. Before I go into the formal definition, I'm going to give you an example of what a limit is. So suppose I have one whole pizza and I decide to eat half of it. Mmm, I can still hear my stomach growling from hunger. So I decide to eat half of what's remaining. So half of a half would be a quarter. I'm starting to get annoyed now because I'm still hungry. So I decide to eat half of what I just ate. So half of a fourth would be one eighth. And so it goes on. Notice that I will never eat the whole pizza under this premise, but the more I eat, the closer I will get to having eaten the whole pizza. So we say that the limit is one. So limits, define it mathematically, can be used to describe how a function behaves as the independent variable, which is the input number, approaches a certain value, which is y, the output number, even if the output value does not exist. So let's take a look at this example. So consider the function f of x equals 2x minus 3, and suppose we select input numbers x closer and closer to the number 4. So fill in the input and output table below which is the numerical representation, and then take note of what happens to the output numbers. So I'm going to approach the number 4 from either side of it. So if I start small, let's say I start at 2, I put 2 in for x, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. Next I go to 3.6. So 2 times 3.6 minus 3 I get 4.2. And I continue this process with 3.9, I get an output of 4.8. 3.99 for x, I get an output of 4.98. 3.999, when I plug it in for x here, I get an output of 4.998. If I start from the other direction and I start at a larger number, let's say 5, when I plug in 5, I get 2 times 5 minus 3, I get 7. I plug in x is 4.8, I get 6.6. 4.1 gives me an output of 5.2. 4.01 gives me an output of 5.02. And 4.001 gives me an output of 5.002. So I can see as my x value approaches 4, it's getting closer to 4 here, my output, which is here, it gets closer and closer to the number 5. That is the numerical representation, so let's take a look at what that looks like graphically. Since we should look at um, this lit definition, uh, numerically, graphically, verbally, and then we'll eventually get to the algebra. So graphically, uh, I'm going to graph 2x minus 3, and that gives me a uh, y-intercept of negative 3, and my slope is 2. Okay, so then we have y-intercept of negative 3 and slope 2. So I'm going to use this information to help me graph. So I start off with negative 3 and a slope of 2. So I graph a whole bunch of points and then I'm going to grab my ruler to connect things. And I can see graphically, as my x value approaches the number 4, if I follow my graph, I can see that it approaches this point, which is actually the y value of 5. So that agrees numerically. Now what we can say verbally is now, as x approaches 4, f of x approaches 5. As x approaches 4, and when you use this arrow to represent the word approach, we can say that f of x approaches 5. Now, in the formal algebraic notation, uh, we can say that limit, as x approaches 4, 
the x approaching 4 is written underneath the word limit. We put the function beside, which is the function that we're taking a look at, which in this case is 2x minus 3. And we see that this limit of this function as x approaches 4 is now equal to 5. Now, we could have calculated or evaluated when x is 4 and plugged it in, as you can see, um, if we go back, 2 times 4 minus 3, that gives me 5 as well. But unfortunately, this doesn't always work. So let's take a look um, at the formal definition. So the formal definition states that um, the concept of limit um, is central to calculus. So we're going to concentrate um, in this video on an intuitive introduction to limits. And later on, we will take a look at uh, how to calculate limits algebraically. So limits can be used to describe how a function behaves as the independent variable moves toward a certain value. So by the definition of the limit, uh, we can read this as the limit of f of x equals l as x approaches a, or the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l. So this means that as x gets very close to a, but not equal to a, or not necessarily equal to a, then the function value, which is our y value, gets very close to the number L. Now we're going to take a look at this example, which uh, you will do in class. So let's go down to the note. It is important to graph as well as use a table of values so that you can visually see what is happening. So for example, if we take a look at this graph or this limit here, so let's say let's find the limit as x approaches 0 of sine pi over x. So if you graph this um, on a graphing calculator or some graphing uh, program, you will find that it starts off like this, but then it actually goes up and down and down here, and then it keeps on going. So what's happening in this spot here in the center where x is approaching zero is that it's oscillating. So because it oscillates, it doesn't actually have a limit. So we're gonna say that this limit of sine pi over x, it has no limit. because the y value oscillates between 1 and negative 1. So really important that we don't just always calculate our limits algebraically, but it's nice to visualize what the graph looks like. So the existence of a limit as x approaches a doesn't always depend on how the function may or may not be defined at a. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what it means to have one-sided and two-sided limits. So if we use, uh, we're going to use this example here um, of the function 1 over x. We're going to graph it and we're going to create an input and output table to see what happens. Um, so let's take a look at what this would look like. So actually, before we actually do part A, well, let's actually do part B. We're going to create our table so that we can actually graph 1 over x. So let's choose some negative numbers. I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, and I actually want to pick a fraction, so negative a half. We already have a 0, and we'll pick a half, 1, and then 2. So I'm going to take my x values, and I'm going to put it into um, x here in this function here, and I get negative a half, negative one, negative two. When I plug in zero, notice that it's going to be divided by zero, so that's going to give an undefined value. 
when I plug in a half, remember one divided by half is two, and then one, and then a half. So when I graph this, I'm going to get, um, this is what we call a reciprocal function. So we get this side here on the left, plot my points on the right. And to show that at zero, um, the y value is undefined, we're going to put an asymptote down on the y-axis. So if I ask you what's the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, we can see that there is no value. So when there isn't a value, we actually say that it does not exist. So the limit does not exist. And sometimes people use the abbreviation DNE, does not exist. And we can see from the table here that when x approaches 0, it also doesn't exist. But we don't say that it's undefined because that's the value of f of x, but when we're talking about a limit, we're saying whether what the number is. And there is no number, so the limit does not exist. So in order for a limit to exist, the limit from the right and the limit from the left must be equal. And it must exist. So it cannot be infinity. So to talk about limits from the left and limits from the right, we use this notation with a little plus sign, as you can see here, or a little negative sign. So when I say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a, we would say with a plus sign from the right. If it says the limit x as it approaches a and has a little negative sign, this is to indicate the limit from the left. So the theorem states that a function has a limit as x approaches a if and only if the right hand and the left hand limit at a exists and they're equal. So from the left and from the right, they have to be the same number. Otherwise, there is no limit. So let's take a look at this example here together. So we have the graph of f here. There's a whole bunch of little piecewise functions. And we take a look at limit of f of x as x approaches 1. So here is 1. So when we approach 1, and because it has a plus sign from the right, we're going to use this piece of the graph here, this portion. So from the right, the y value that it's approaching is 0. So we state that the limit is 0. Now when I have the negative sign, and that means I'm approaching from the left. So remember, here is 1, and I want to approach from the left. So from the left, the piece that I would need to take a look at that's closest to 1 from the left would be this piece here. And from here, I can see that y value is actually 2. Now, since these two limits are not the same, 0 is not the same as 2, when I ask you what's the, x, what's the limit as x approaches 1, we actually say this does not exist. So you can try the rest of the examples in class, and we will go over them.